Welcome to audience students and scholars here on Dr. Ramjad Ali. In this video we are going to discuss uh, about from the short run to the long run the Mandel Fleming model with a changing price level. Dear scholars, so far as we have used the Mandel Fleming model to study the small open economy in short run. When the price level is fixed, we now consider what happens when the price level changes. Doing so will show how the Mandel Fleming model provides a theory of aggregate demand curve in a small open economy. It will also show how the short run model relates to the long run model of open economy. So let's first discuss about change in the prices. Now consider changes in the price level, the nominal exchange rates in the economy will no longer be moving in tandem. Thus we must distinguish between these two variables. The nominal exchange rate can be denoted by uh, lowercase e and the real exchange rate can be denoted by epsilon which equals ep over P steric. So we can write the Mandel Fleming model as y is equal to c into y minus t plus i r steric plus g plus n x epsilon. So this is for the i s steric. And m over p real money balances is equal to l r steric y and this is for l m steric. So these equations uh, should be familiar uh, uh, by us now. The first equation is related to the uh, iesteric curve and the second equation describe the LM steric curve. Notice that the net export here depends on the real exchange rate. So let's discuss the graphical presentation for that. We have here the Mandel Fleming model as a theory of aggregate demand we have the two parts or two panels of our this graph the first panel is related to the Mandel Fleming model and the second panel will discuss uh, for the aggregate demand curve so let's first discuss the first panel panel A the Mandel Fleming model we have income output y on x axis we have real exchange rate uh, on y axis we have a vertical LM steric P1 so at this we have the price level 1 and uh, uh, we have a downward sloping IS steric curve and we know that the intersection of IS and LM will decide the exchange rate and national income level so here we have Y1 income with epsilon 1 exchange rate so a fall in the price level uh, shift the LM steric curve to the right word. This means we have our, uh, more real money balances. So a fall in, uh, in the price level P shift the LM steric curve to the right. So we have a new LM steric P2 curve and this LM steric uh, P2 intercept our IS steric curve at this point so this will actually lower our real exchange rate from epsilon 1 to epsilon 2. So we have a decrease in our real exchange rate. So this will increase our national income from Y1 to Y2. So fall in uh, um, uh, prices will shift the LM curve to the rightward. This will lower our exchange rate and this will raise the national income. So let's move towards the second panel uh, of the graphical presentation that is aggregate demand curve. We have income output Y on X axis. We have price level P on Y axis. So if we take this income curve in this part we have price level with that income we have y1 income with p1 price 
and if we take this part to this graph we have uh, y2 income with p2 price so if we join uh, this point and this point we get the aggregate demand curve so this point represent the aggregate demand curve summarize the relationship between p and y so panel a shows that when price level falls the lm steric curve shift to the right word the equilibrium of national income will rise while the panel b shows that a negative relationship between uh, price level and national income so that represent the aggregate demand curve so overall this uh, figure shows that what happens when the price level falls because a lower price level raises the uh, level of real money balances from this point to this point so we have a elastic curve shift to the right word as we have did here so a real exchange rate falls from this point to this point and equilibrium national income rises from y1 to y2 the aggregate demand curves here summarize the negative uh, relationship between the price level and level of national income so uh, just as the isn lm model has explains the aggregate demand curve in a closed economy the mandel fleming model here explains the aggregate demand curve for a small open economy in both cases the aggregate demand curve uh, shows the set of equilibria in the goods and money markets that arises as the price level varies and in both cases anything that changes uh, the equilibrium income other uh, than uh, uh, we can say that change in the price level shift the aggregate demand curve policies and events uh, that raise Uh, national income for any given price level shift the aggregate demand curve uh, to the right policies and events that lower uh, national income for any given price shift the aggregate demand curve to leftward so let's see another graphical presentation which explains uh, that how the short run model uh, uh, can be related uh, to the long run model So here we have the uh, short run and the long run equilibria in a small open economy. Here we have a two panel. The first panel is related to the Mandel Fleming model. The second panel is related to the model of aggregate supply and aggregate demand. So first uh, uh, we discuss about the Mandel Fleming model. We have income output y on x axis. We have real exchange rate on y axis we have a upward sloping uh, or vertical sorry a vertical lm steric curve that is lm steric p1 and uh, we have a downward sloping is steric curve we know that the intersection of is and lm will decide the equilibrium level of the economy so that is point k So at this point we have y1 income with epsilon 1 exchange rate. So point K in uh, uh, both parts, which we will discuss in further, that uh, shows the equilibrium under the Keynesian assumption that the price level is fixed. So uh, when the price level decreases, the real money balances will shift rightward. that we have lm steric p2 and this will intersect uh, the is curve at point c and we have a, a rise in national income from y1 to y over bar so this reveal that we have a constant national income at this point we have a uh, Uh, a lower exchange rate uh, from epsilon 1 to epsilon 
So moving towards the aggregate uh, supply and demand relation, we have income output Y on X axis, price level P on Y axis, and we have a uh, uh, long run aggregate supply curve, a vertical shape, and we have a, sh a short run aggregate supply curve S1 and at this point we have a constant national income Y over bar and uh, at this point uh, we have P1 price with the downward sloping aggregate demand curve this will intersect uh, the short run supply curve at point K and uh, when we have a uh, a shift in the short run aggregate supply curve from uh, uh, SAR uh, S1 to SAR S2 we have uh, a decrease in price level from P1 to P2 so uh, this uh, graph shows the short run and long run equilibrium both panels of the figure we have uh, here K will be written like uh, we have to put K also here let me write for you like K at this point and we have a C on this point as well so in the both panels at K describe the short run at this point and this point uh, uh, describe the short run equilibrium because it assumes a fixed price level at this equilibrium the demand for goods and services is too low to keep the economy producing at its natural level over time low demand causes the price level to fall from P1 to P2 the fall in the price level raises uh, uh, real money balances from uh, uh, LM static P1 to LMP LM static P2 so our I LM curve shift rightward the real exchange rate depreciated from epsilon 1 to epsilon 2 so the net export rise eventually the economy reaches at point C the long run equilibrium the speed of transition uh, between the short run and long run equilibrium depends on how quickly the price level respond so uh, we can say that the price level are just to restore the economy at uh, its natural level of output so we have to see that how this distance will be covered by the economy from point K to point C so our central goal uh, in this video is that uh, how uh, policy influence uh, at point K the short run equilibrium and uh, uh, when uh, we read at point C the long run equilibrium whenever the policy consider any change in policy the need to consider both uh, point K the short run equilibrium and point C the long run equilibrium effect on their decision any type of policy will be taken so this is all about the from the short run to the long run the mandel fleming model with a changing price level so see you with another video ciao